this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. We are talking about Builder Trend today, okay? And if you're not familiar with Builder Trend and you're in real estate investing and for, as far as rehabs or you do residential remodeling or commercial remodeling, Builder Trend is a really amazing tool, fully comprehensive tool to help you manage your projects, manage your budgets, coordinate with your clients and your customers as well. So uh, we're gonna start into Builder Trend in this video, and we're going to focus on scheduling, okay? Now, to me, probably one of the most useful, one of the most used features of Builder Trend is the schedule. It's got a really great scheduling functionality, something that I think we can take for granted a lot, okay? So I'm gonna show you the, uh, you know, the intricacies of Builder Trend scheduling, how it works, because it's really an anchor of using the rest of the system. Okay, so what I have here is a builder trend set up and I'm on the home screen of a project called 34 Long. Okay, and I haven't really done anything with this project yet and that's why everything looks pretty much blank. And this is typically how I'm gonna start almost any project I'm on. I'm gonna start with a blank slate and I'm going to create the schedule. Okay, now you can use the templates to create a schedule and those are a really great time saver but I am going to create one from scratch today because pretty much you're gonna to have to create one from scratch to get a template. So I wanna start there so that we're sure we know how everything works, all right? Now, one thing I'm gonna point out when you set up, I just click the info there to get our job details. We can indicate our working days, okay, by default. It's gonna give you Monday through Friday. If you wanted to turn on weekends, you can do that here. I'm going to just keep it as is, okay? And I don't have anything else really big in here to talk about with scheduling. The only other thing that I will uh, get to is phases, but I'll get to that in a second. Let's go to the schedule. Now, my favorite way to create and draw up a schedule is to use the Gantt chart view. And then I like to use the month view uh, kind of after I've done it to see things in a different way. And I'm gonna show you that. But you have all these different options to view your schedule. And again, this is something that's extremely robust compared to other project management software. So I'm going to go to the Gantt chart view and I'm going to start building my schedule here, okay? And the first thing I do is create your first item. So like when the project starts, what's the first thing you're gonna do? And almost always the first step in projects that I do is some kind of demo, okay? So um, maybe demo is, is the first thing. Now, actually the first thing, something else, I'm gonna come back to that in a second. Um, don't worry about the dates right now. Uh, indicate how long you think that this might take. And then here is really the power of Builder Trend is in their predecessors, phases and tags, etc. So I'm gonna come back to predecessors in a second. I'm gonna put this into a phase, okay? The phases helps you organize the project in a linear fashion. You can filter on the phases and you can just see it kind of at a summary level. So I'm going to assign this to a phase of demo and rough-ins. Now, when you start Builder Trend, you're not gonna have the same lift list I have here. I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but I'm just going to create this item just so we can get something on the calendar, okay? So I just saved it, I'm gonna click the X, and then you can see here, I have demo and rough-ins as my phase. If I click the plus button, there is my line item. I don't have to display the phases, I can just display the items, and then it shows up like this, okay? Now, let me talk about phases. So you saw my list of phases. You're gonna to need to set up your own and you can certainly use mine if you'd like to, but here I'm in my settings and I'm gonna to go to my schedule settings. And within this, you see my phases. So I, you know, I like to organize my projects this way. I do demo and rough ins. So that's demo, framing, rough plumbing, rough electrical. Moving into drywall prep and drywall itself. Insulation would fall in here as well, as well as paint. Then I have one for flooring and tile. Carpentry would be vanities, interior doors, casing, trim. I have exterior, uh, that is, for us, we do a lot of interior work, so exterior is kind of its own little phase. Uh, so we'd be doing windows, exterior doors, if we're getting into a roof, gutters, soffits, all that kind of stuff. Then I have a finish phase, and that's really where I do finish electric, finish plumbing, uh, miscellaneous hardware, shower doors, all that little stuff uh, that kind of ends the project. And then I, I also have this one here, the punch, touch up and miscellaneous. It's really just to have another little category as we get toward the end of a project. And if I need to slam in like a really long list of little stuff, I'll put it all in there, okay? So these are my phases and you can, um, you can set up your own as well. Okay, so now I wanna, I wanna demonstrate 
like the most valuable part about a builder trend schedule and that's predecessors okay so what i do with all my projects is i tell my client here's you know our earmarked start date you're we're probably going to start around this date okay now i communicate with them that things are pretty volatile especially now we're in covid things are just really crazy so what i do is i on every schedule i create this schedule item and i call it a dash project start the only reason I put the A there is so that alphabetically it shoots to the top. I'm going to put it in the very first phase, my demo and rough ends. Okay. And I'm going to set this for what is my current outlook as to when I'm going to start this project. Maybe I told the customer, Hey, we're going to start on or around August 17th. Okay. And that's a one day thing. I'm going to click save and put it there. Okay. Now here's the beauty. And, and I encourage you to follow this rule. Every schedule item should be after this start should be dependent on that item or another item that is dependent. So what do I mean by dependent? We have a predecessor. So here I have my demo. <clears throat> right now I just tagged it as a fixed date somewhere, right? But I'm going to use the power of predecessors to say that this schedule item demo is actually dependent on the start of the project, okay? And as you see, I do that, it pushes the dates, okay? So here's what is so great about the predecessors. See this link that's created here. The project starts this date and then I demo the next day. Now I'm gonna fix that. We'll obviously demo the same date. But what I love about this and what is so important when you're doing this kind of scheduling is the minute that this start date pushes out, let's say that we push it out a week, the rest of the schedule is going to move as well. If we didn't build those links, okay, if we did not build those links, the project starts gonna move but nothing else moves. And this is an essential part of any scheduling tool, okay? It's one thing to just put things on a calendar, but the fact that things are dependent on each other and have relationships is so important. Now notice here, we got a problem because project start is Monday, but I'm not gonna demo till Tuesday. No, that's not true. I'm gonna demo the day that I start the project. So all we have to do in that case, and this comes up in many other dependency relationships, is on this, uh, this dependent object here. So I'm dependent on the project start, and this is a finish to start, meaning once that once this one finishes, I'm gonna start the next one. We could change this to a start to start, okay? Which is going to say that as soon as my A project start starts, I'm going to start my demo, okay? That's one way, or we could do a finish to start just because that's default and do a, what's called a negative lag and say that I can, I can begin this one one day before this one ends, okay? Either way, we'll accomplish the same thing, basically that my demo can start as soon as my project starts. Let's add some more schedule items, okay? So after I demo, what's gonna happen next? Generally, I'm gonna be doing some framing of some sort, okay? This might be miscellaneous framing, this might be structural, not really sure yet, but let's put that in there and let's say that uh, framing is gonna take three days. Now, I will not start framing until demo is complete. So this finish to start with zero lag makes complete sense. I will wanna put, uh, framing into a phase. Let's see what happens when I don't put it into a phase, okay? And again, I like to view my calendar with phases open. So if I go here to phases, notice that phase on assign pops up. If I hit the plus button on that, framing shows up there because I hadn't assigned it to a phase. So I'm going to assign it to a phase. Now, everything that I'm doing here can be set into a template. So there's a lot of work to establish your very first schedule, but once you do it once, you can establish that template, draw upon that template for a future project, and then make changes as you need to. All right, so I just assigned that to a phase. You can see here that I start my project, I have demo for two days, and I have framing for three, okay? What happens next? Okay, I'm probably going to do my rough plumbing. Let's say that I'm doing a kitchen, okay? Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna call this rough plumbing. I'm not gonna mess with this. Notice I'm not clicking this because I want the scheduling engine to do that. I will indicate the work days and I will say that it's dependent on framing and that it's in the phase of rough ends. And now I'm gonna click save and new. I'm just gonna do another one here. Now, the way that I do my projects is that I have rough electric follow rough plumbing. So I'm gonna do rough electric, still in my rough end stage, but here I'm gonna do the predecessor is rough plumbing. My electrical maybe is gonna take two days. And I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna call this one insulation and drywall prep. Okay, or maybe you have an inspection, who knows, right? I'm gonna make that dependent on electric. That's a one day task. 
and we'll make it in demo and run events. Okay, let's see what my schedule looks like now after I've added all of those. All right, so you see now we're spanning two weeks. So we have demo and framing, moving into rough plumbing for two days, rough electric for two days, insulation for one. Okay, so now let's look at like predecessors again. Let's say that I have an insulation inspection. I probably have these inspections up here too, but let's say I want to add an insulation inspection. And let's say that, you know, I know the inspector and I can typically get it done uh, the day that I complete the insulation, right? So I'm going to do, I'm going to make this insulation inspection dependent as a start to start, okay? And then I can't hang drywall until that's done. Let me put this into a phase. Okay, so now I'm going to add the hang and finish drywall task. Okay, that's gonna take you know, a good number of days, maybe five days. Let's put it in the drywall phase and let's make it a predecessor on our insulation inspection. Okay, and if I do that, let's see what the schedule is looking like now. Okay, so you can see another phase popped up. If I hit the plus button there, you can see that I'm into hang and finish drywall. So I have two weeks and now I'm into drywall. So what happens if the insulation inspector doesn't show up on that Friday, right? This is the beauty of dependencies, okay? So if that doesn't happen, now, by the way, let me just call something out here. What we see here is that Monday is off. It's not a non-working day, okay? That's because it's Labor Day, all right? And I've established in my system that Monday is a non-working day. So this is super valuable. It automatically knows that, right? Now I know my drywallers are gonna get it done this week, so I might change this duration to four. You know, they might not work on Monday, Labor Day, but they're probably gonna work hard enough to get this job in and out. So I'm gonna kind of do that. So four days instead of five. But what happens if my insulation inspection moves, okay? And moves somewhere else? Well, what I can do with that is I can take this and say, okay, they called me and said, hey, they're not coming until the 9th, okay? I just moved it to the 9th. Notice that it updates my lag on Rough Electric so that everything stays consistent. When that happens, my hang and finish drywall is gonna bounce out, okay? Alrighty. So, and actually, I just changed the wrong one, didn't I? So I did insulation and drywall prep. Let's say that that still can happen on the fourth, so no lag, but my inspection gets pulled out, right? That's the one that I wanted, okay? So here's my inspection gets pulled out by a few days. So I'm still done with my insulation, but my inspection didn't happen, okay? And you can see that it pushes there. Okay, so again, I'm building this in the Gantt chart. The Gantt chart view is my favorite way to see dependencies and to see how everything flows. But we also have the month view, and we can't forget about that. I like to view the month view almost on a daily, weekly basis to see what is going on with everything, okay? So here I, I see it on a, more of a calendar view. Another really great view is the list view. What I like about the list view is it's quick to add assignees and to adjust things if you need to, okay? So the list view, it's also a good place to mark things complete. If I wanted to mark them complete, I could just do that. So notice that nothing's assigned right here. What I'm going to do is I am going to assign some people. So I'm gonna assign myself to this one and I'm gonna assign Viv to it as well. Let's get Viv on there. And then let's also say that me and Viv are responsible for the drywall prep. Okay, so why is assigning items so important? What I use this for is for resource planning, okay? So if you have a team and you have multiple projects going on, what's really useful is you can take a schedule like this, okay? So I can take maybe a month view and I can say, hey, what the heck is Viv up to during the month of August, okay? And I can take this entire view and I can say, okay, give me the items that are assigned to Viv so I can see what is going on. So if I click Viv here and I click update results, you're gonna see where Viv is allocated. And what is so beneficial about this is when we have multiple projects, we can see where she is. She's at 34 long demoing here. Maybe she's doing some, some carpentry over here at a different project and we can do those filters, okay? The schedule is the anchor of any builder trend setup. What do I mean by it's the anchor? Okay, first of all, I think it's like the biggest quick win within builder trend. It's super robust. It can do pretty much anything you need it to do. Every uh, project will need a schedule, right? There's a lot of bells and whistles to builder trend. 
this is a core function. And this is exactly what I mean by the anchor. We can link other aspects of the project to the schedule, okay? And I'm gonna get into this in some further detail, but I just wanna give you a taste of this, okay? Let's say, for example, the owner, who is my customer, owes us an invoice when we start the project, right? Okay, so let's say that, you know, project start, actually, let's do another one. Let's do after drywall is complete. Okay, so we they owe us money after drywall is complete. And look right here, I can set the deadline, instead of just a random date, I can say it's due when hang and finish drywall is complete, okay? And then I can indicate how much they owe me, okay? We can also do QuickBooks, I'm not gonna do that right now. All right, so here's an invoice, I'm gonna save and release it. Now here's what's so cool about this, okay? It, on my monthly calendar, I can actually see those invoices too. Okay, so not only do I see the schedule of work to be done, but I also can see the owner invoice right here. Okay, so everything can show up here. This works for selections, change orders, uh, daily logs, all that stuff, okay? So this is really great. Now, what happens if this insulation inspection, and here's another reason I love this month view, check this out. As long as you're offline, okay, my insulation inspection pushed me out a week. Okay, drywall pushed out a week, and that means my invoice got pushed out a week. Everything is related and linked. The schedule is the anchor, okay? This is an introduction to the schedule in Builder Trend. We are barely scratching the surface, but I wanted to establish the foundation and the roots of having a really strong schedule in Builder Trend because it really is the core that makes the other aspects pull together and work, okay? So we're gonna have plenty of follow-ups. We're gonna take this exact example and keep moving it through. We're gonna talk more on schedule. We're gonna get into all the other aspects of project management, financials, file management, working with your homeowner, all of that's gonna be in here. Now, if you are flipping houses and you don't have a homeowner, this is still really good software, okay? Now, I use, as you know, I use Podio, and I use Podio to manage my rehabs. That's great too, this is more expensive, Builder Trend. It's a little bit more robust. For flipping, you don't really need the client side, and that's why I'm, I'm able to use Podio for that. But if you have client-facing work, and or you just want all this functionality, Builder Trend is super powerful. Okay, so let me know your questions. We're gonna have plenty more. We're gonna link all these videos together. We're gonna to, you know, set up a playlist for it. But let me know your thoughts and questions. Can Builder Trend do this? Can it do that? And I'll answer them in these follow-up videos, all right? Until that, check out all the free resources we have available at IncomeDigs.com, and I will see you on the next video.